So I'm beginning to sound like a bit of a broken record with this crack to butt thump thing. So I am not going to do any more on it after this video. But I think this video proves that the thump that everybody's measuring is a reflection. So in this video, um, I'm going to be testing the frequency and the stereo field. Um, the recordings I'm going to use will be uh, the Backright 7 meter mic and another new one, which is slightly more central to the apex of the amphitheater. I originally saw this uh, video floating around on Twitter and it was Dr. Conspiracy there that, um, you know, shared it and tagged me in it. But what brought it to my attention mainly was the fact that the angle that the 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 video is at it's fairly central to the courtyard which would be important for measuring the stereo field um it's not exactly central but that's okay i suppose the point of this video is to conclude these three videos here um because it's outside of the scope of what i originally set out to test but because the internet was so strong on it um obviously i can only come at it from an audio perspective and use what i know about audio um, all I plan to do is measure, compare, map, and verify. This is a short recap. In this video, I'm explaining that if you don't know where to stick the ruler because we don't know the trajectory, or we're presuming a trajectory, and we don't know how to measure out from that trajectory, then we can't measure crack to bang effectively. But also, if we don't know the barrel length, the bullet load, um, and everything like that, um, we can't actually tell how big the Mac cone is going to be or Mark cone is going to be because we don't know what force is behind that projectile. Like in this video, I point out the fact that the boom of the rifle is heard at the impact time. It's too bassy. It's at 40 hertz. You shouldn't be getting... Um, we shouldn't be getting the sound of the gun... Um, until another 200 milliseconds or whatever later um, based on these uh, bullet speeds. Um, so, I, yeah, that, that was what I put on Jason's show the other day, was that how can, how can the boom of the rifle be heard at the beginning if it was 130 metres away? And in this video, I take the time to point out that a dry gunshot sounds much much different to a crack to bang which is a high pitch crack and a little thump a bang a boom a thump whatever you want to call it and i also point out in a waveform that it mimics in the ref in in the repeat it's not a, if you look here you can see that it's totally different pro these are the two mics that i'm using for this test um just to compare with each other to see if we get similar or the same or whatever results so I need to calculate um, how far the thump was from this mic here. Um, we already have this one at 216, 220 milliseconds or something like that. So a quick little measure. Um, and we'll 333 milliseconds. Um, plot that into the calculator. 0.333 milliseconds multiplied by 342. Oh no, 6.2. Was it 0.8? It doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything. We have 115 meters. Um, divide that by two, and we have about 60 meters. Um, so if we measure out from there to about 60 meters, that'll do. We can see that. The reflection is coming off of here. If it's a reflection, if it's a thump, if it's a reflection, um, that's still to be de determined. Um, and then we can do the same with the other mic. Now, the other mic's actually pretty interesting because it doesn't actually go to that building, which um, throws a bit of a spanner into the works, but still doesn't mean it can't be explained. So... Um, I worked it out at 216 milliseconds. So we'll just work that out real quick. Divide it by two because it's coming back to the mic. It's a reflection. 
37 meters. Now you can see when I go out by 40 meters or whatever, 37 ish, we're hitting this this apex here. So there's a very good chance that it could be reflecting from there. And the reason it's not reflecting from there is because this one actually comes as a later echo because it's further away. But it's important. It's important because you know it goes to show that this crack to thump stuff is only relevant if you are measuring from the trajectory, um, and that that is your perfect proof of why this can't be used in court. So if I take the thump uh, timing um, and work it out from this location, well, we can clearly see that it is hitting this building which is what i think is reflecting the thump sound now taking it upon myself to do the front 45 uh the back left 40 as well um and you can see that they are oh not wrong one. Oh, that's another one there we go um and the front 15 meter mic here and you can see that they all are on this zone here they all intersect here. So I would put that as a reflection for that thump using that information. So next on the agenda is um, the envelope and the timing of the frequencies. Because like I said at the beginning, I want to analyze frequency in the stereo field to see how they interact. So here's the low frequency part of the recording. Everything below about 100 hertz. Um, these big waves um are the base energy essentially they're bigger they're not they're not small like treble um they appear to be the heavy bass thump of the gunshot itself and then later the knock we can hear around a third of a second later you'll notice the left and the right lines move pretty closely together but they're not exact they're not perfect and that tiny difference tells us which side of the phone each part of the sound frequency arrived at first. Now up here, the same idea, but for the treble, uh, the really sharp, snappy part of the sound shot, you know, the sample. Um, these spikes happen almost exactly uh, the same moment in both channels, but the right channels lead just by a hair, only a few hundredths of a millisecond. Um, that means the high frequencies, the sharp crack, um, are coming roughly straight ahead or a touch to the right. Here's the breakdown. Each row is a different frequency band, and the numbers show how many milliseconds the left channel leads or lags behind the right. For example, the mid-range, that's about 400 hertz to 1 kilohertz, um, the, left side's, the left side slightly leads by about 0.43 milliseconds. That's a lot more than you'd expect from a simple mic spacing. Um, so the energy must be coming from a different direction. Likely a reflection hitting the side of the phone first, but above one kilohertz, the right channel is slightly first, which fits the direct line of sight sound. But when we're looking at the knock, um, like the late knock, this pulse is around a third of a second later. The pattern changes. The bass, bass behaves differently while the treble still matches the main event. So that big low-end boom isn't the same source. It's a different direction, most likely a reflection from a wall or surface. So to put it simply, the later bassy knock, the reflection, came from another angle. It didn't come from the same direction as the source. So to test this out, I mean, as I said in the beginning, I used two mics to do this. Um, and if they are pretty consistent, considering they are two separate devices recording the same event, then we can take it as pretty substantial evidence that um, the thump is, at least for these recordings, a reflection and not... Um, crack to bang, so shouldn't be used, I mean, in that format. I mean, maybe, I mean, it's acceptable in some circumstances, sure, and I mean, you know, I'm not dis discounting crack to bang altogether, but ultimately, when we test this mic here, we come up with some pretty interesting results which solidify what this mic is recording. As you can see here, 
I have separated it out into frequency bands again, much like I did with the other, and I've taken the main event, as in the initial shot, shall we say, and the second event being the thump or the knock or the reflection. And instantly we can see that the left, if you look down here on the in, in the in the treble, the left is taking the lead, the yellow. You know, it's, it's way before the uh, blue, which is the right. And then if we go to the actual knock itself, you can see very slightly that the blue is actually in the lower frequencies, which is what we're reflecting, by the way. So I don't know if I was clear on that, but, you know, the, the reflection is going to be slightly duller than the original sound anyway because it loses uh, clarity and energy as as it reflects and it diffuses more. The more it reflects, the more it diffuses. So the first reflection is pretty much a good imprint of the original sound if the reflecting source is big enough. But you can see that the, the left leads here, the right leads there, which essentially means the reflection is coming from a different angle than the source, which proves um, pretty substantially that the, the, the thump is not a thump for these recordings. I'm not saying there isn't a thump at all, um, uh, because I'm pretty convinced that there was a hypersonic, sh not hypersonic, I'm pretty convinced there was a supersonic shot. Um, I've got it recorded through every frequency band, so it, it definitely was supersonic, but you'd have a hard time denying the stereo field it is literally what's been recorded on multiple devices. And of course I will cross check this against other measurements, but I think I've made a pretty good case that even to the new recording that I've never seen before that the, uh, the thump was a reflection. Yeah, like I say, I've made a pretty good case that the uh, thump was a reflection and I've made a, pretty good case of uh why i perceive it the way i do using audio only nothing to do with ballistics realistically it's got nothing to do because that's outside of my scope it's nothing to do with me um i'm just coming it from audio so whether you agree it's a thump or a reflection is kind of irrelevant the point i'm making here from now on because i've proved it well enough for my standards uh to be a reflection that from here on out I'm going to measure it as a reflection. And so from here on out, I can carry on moving forwards with my test and not let this get in the way any further. Appreciate your time on this one. Bye.